Greetings and welcome to our spooky lessons with Odin. This episode is part two of the Bell Toll Necklace, where we will be learning how to make the giant focal piece and how to attach it onto our rope. I have used a 27 millimeter on here, and the bale uses a base of 12 all the way around. If you want to use a smaller cabochon or rivoli, like an 18 millimeter, I try going down about four sections, so use a circle of eight instead of 12. That's just my suggestion. If you don't want to get the 27 millimeter rivolis, I know they're kind of hard to come by. I just have a huge stash of them, and what I had intended for this piece didn't turn out, so I'm stuck with what I got. But you will obviously need your completed rope, so feel free to do that. I know it will take forever, but persevere. So be sure you've checked out the previous video to learn how to make the rope, or if you just want to put this on a separate necklace of your own, feel free to do that as well. And don't forget to check out the exclusive Patreon tutorial where we'll be creating this vampire choker piece with Zolly duos. So there will be links for that down below for the Muser level of Patreon supporters. So for this project, you will need a 27mm Rivoli or Cavachon. And again, if you're using the 18mm, you can do that as well. Just reduce the number of beads on each round. You will need 12 3mm fire polish beads, 12 4mm round pearls, 12 diamond duos or gem duos, 12 super duos, you will need 16 3 millimeter bicones. I'm having a focal bead, I'm using this scarab bead in crystal golden sunshine. Uh, feel free to use whatever bead shape you want, but I wouldn't recommend anything wider than 10 to 12 millimeters, just so that it hangs nicely. And two dangly drops. You will also need size 11 seed beads, two colors of size 15 seed beads, and of course your needle and thread. I'm using a size 12 needle with a thin thing of KO just to get rid of it. But that is what we have. So let us get started. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do to start our base of our bezel is to thread on our initial row. That's going to be a pattern of one size 15, one 3mm bicone, one size 15, then a diamond duo or gem duo, all the way around until you've used up all 12 of your gem duos. And then we're going to form a ring by passing through each one of these beads once more. All the way around until you've met your tail thread again. And when you're doing this, make sure all of your gem duos and diamond or diamond duos are in the same orientation, that all sides are facing the same. Once you've done that, you're going to take your tail and your working thread and tie an overhand knot. We are then going to pass back through the bottom hole of the diamond duo, and then pass immediately through the top hole of the same diamond duo. We're going to add a size 15, a 4mm pearl, size 15, and pass through the next top hole of the next diamond duo along the way. So we end up with that. You're going to repeat that all the way around until you've completed the set. And that is what we end up with. Next you want to come out of a 4mm pearl so that we can start working on the back of our bezel. I'm going to add a size 11, a size 15. I've swapped my colors of size 15s. I'm going to go add a 3mm fire polish, size 15, and size 11. Then pass back around through the pearl. So we form a picot above it, like that. Then I'm going to move down the bezel until I've reached the next pearl. So I go through a 15, gem duo, 15, pearl. Then you repeat that all the way around until you've completed the set, and you've added all the sections on top of the pearls. So you end up with this. The next thing you're going to want to do is come out through the 3mm fire polish. So from the pearl, you travel up through the seed beads and move immediately around to the 3mm. Gonna add a size 15, a super duo, and a size 15, then pass through the next 3mm bead on the round. You will repeat that all the way until you've completed the set. And that is what it looks like. Everything is starting to close up. We are going to open up the bezel a little bit and slide in a Rivoli color side down. Pull everything tight again. We're gonna end up with our thread coming out of the bottom hole of the super duo. 
Going to go pass immediately through the top hole of the same Super Duo. Going to add three size 15 CBs and pass through the top hole of the next Super Duo over, so we start closing the gap. You can repeat that all the way around until you've completed the set, and then reinforce once or twice in order to make everything cinch together. And that is what the completed back of our bezel is going to look like. Now, I ended up adding a new thread to my piece, but you can also, if you still have enough thread to work with, travel to where we need to go next for our new step. So you'll start probably coming out of a top hole of a super duo. You'll go up to the bottom hole, go up through 15, 15, 11, through a pearl, through a 15, and through the top hole of a diamond duo out in the front. I've also gotten rid of my tail end because I wasn't going to use it. But now we're going to add the finishing decorations to the front of the piece. So the decoration works pretty similar to the connection pieces of our rope. We're going to basically be making X's in between the gem duos. So I have on my thread two size 15's A, one B, two 15's A. I'm coming out of the top hole of this diamond duo here, I'm just going to pass through the bottom hole of the next gem duo over. Just the gem duo, we're not touching any other beads. So that we form half of our X on there. Adding on my beads once more, I'm starting from the bottom, going up through the top gem duo of the next one over. Like that. So we start to form a zigzag pattern. You're going to repeat that all the way around until you've completed the set. And that is what we end up with. We've got a zigzag pattern going up and down. Now we're going to continue the steps in order to complete the other half of the cross. So I'm coming out of the original gem duo that we started from. I'm going to pass through the next 15, pearl and 15. Then pass through the next gem duo over that doesn't have any seed beads connected to it. And then we're going to take two steps in order to finish the cross on this side. So I'm adding two color A size 15s. I'm going to pass downward through the color B in the center of that cross. So we start to form a Y. Then we're going to add two more size 15s and pass through the bottom hole of the next gem duo over. And that will finish our cross pattern. So once more, we add two 15s. We're going to go up through the size 15 color B in the center. Add on two size 15s and pass through the top hole of the next gem duo over in order to finish the set. So when we turn over, you add two, go down, add two, go through the gem duo. Add two, go up, add two, go through the gem duo. Repeat that all the way around until you've completed the set. And that is what the bezel will look like when you've completed that row. Now we're going to do our finishing touches on the front of the bezel. You want to end up with your thread coming out of a 3mm bead, and how I did that was I was coming out of a gem duo, I passed immediately down through one diagonal, through five seed beads, and then immediately into the 3mm bicone. I'm going to add two color A, one color B, two color A, and then pass immediately into the next three millimeter bicone so that it wraps underneath the gem duo. You're going to repeat that all the way around until you've completed the set. And that is what we end up with, with all of the points around. Now, what we're going to do is one extra little step to kind of reinforce things and cinch them together as well as make sure that our pointy bits are pointy. I'm coming out of a 3mm bicone. What I'm going to do is pass through the next two color A beads, skip over the color B, and go immediately up through the next size A beads. So that we pull the thread behind it and we force the color B forward. From there, I'm just going to go through the next 3 millimeter bead, and then repeat. So we go through 2, skip over the B, go up 2, and then through the 3 millimeter all the way around until all of our points are popped. Then once you finish that, you can end your thread here, 
and we'll start to work on the bale. You'll need to have your thread coming out of one of these sets of three size 15s. So we're going to be working with the ladder stitch to move things across. And that is what we end up with. Now my thread is coming out of those three seed beads at the back of the bezel. We're going to create a bale using the ladder stitch. So, I'm going to take three size 11 seed beads and just do a ladder stitch from the connection that we have here. So I'm coming out one side, and I'm going to pass through in the same direction so that we form a loop over those three beads. Then to set up for my next stitch, I'm going to pass back through those three size 11s and continue my ladder stitch pulling tight so that the stitch sits on top of that. Going forward, we're going to keep going down, then pass through the beads again to set up for the next stitch. We're just going to go down until we just meet this next set of size 15s that are directly across the way from this one. You can also reinforce as each stitch progresses, so after going through the top beads, you go back down through the previous stitch and go back up. You can even reinforce over here if you can get your needle down through it. I'm also using size 11 seed beads so that I don't have to make as many stitches, but if you want to use size 15s, feel free to do so as well. But you want to make just enough to meet this end here, because what's going to happen is eventually over time the bale is going to stretch out and you want it so that it just barely fits the rope inside without too much friction and too much sliding but not big enough so that over the years it'll fit over the connection points here. Also this rope is very squishy so you should be able to pinch it underneath in order to make it fit. So this is what my bale looks like after about 10 stitches. What I'm going to do is take my rope I'm going to fold it in half and count 10 sections, so 2, 4, 6, 8, number 10, where I already have my other bale on it. And I have my pendant resting on top of my 10th set here. So what I'm going to do is set my pendant in the skinny sides of the tube, wrap my bale around that tube, and then I'm going to complete my ladder stitch, pretending that the size 15s on the opposite side are the beads that are going to join the ladder stitch together. So I've got my needle coming out of those three seed beads. I'm going to pull through and pull tight so that my bale starts to connect right there. And then I'm going to pass my needle back through the size 11 set here. And this will complete the joint. Pull tight and you can see a seamless transition between there. You'll want to reinforce this one a couple times to keep it from popping out, and then you can end your threads. The last step is to attach the fringe parts, and you want to pick a set of two pearls that is directly in the center where beneath the bale is, which is why we put our pendant on top of the rope first and connect the bale so that we can easily tell what pearls we need to use in order to attach our two layers of fringe. So as you can kind of see here, I've used four pearls, the central four pearls, in order to go into the center and add our fringe. I have three tiers of fringe. I have one loop going inside the center pearls, and one tier, this little ropey bit, going on the outside of those pearls. So I'm going to be using one, two, and then three and four for the outer sets. I'm then going to add 9 size 15s, a 3mm bicone, my focal piece, 3mm bicone, and 9 size 15s. Now, these 3mm are extra, not included in the materials list, because I had to add them for the focal piece. The hole was too big, so I had to put something there to block it up, so that it didn't eat my size 15s. Then I'm going to pass inside to the next 4mm pearl on the bezel so that we have something hanging down like this. From here, we're going to form another loop on the bezel. Then next, I'm going to add a random assortment of beads. I've added 13, a 3mm bicone, and something probably around the 20 or 30 range, just long enough that I can drape it over the focal, a 3mm and a 13 seed beads. Then what I'm going to do is pass from the outside in towards the same pearl that we started from to add this one. 
so that we end up with a loop beneath this one. Then from here, I'm going to reinforce by passing down through this fringe again, out through the purl, and over here. Once I finish that, I'm going to make my way to this gem duo over here, so that I can wrap around and go through the purl on the inside direction. So I'm coming out of this purl, going towards my right, I'm going to pass through the size 15, gem duo, 15, purl, 15, and through this gem duo. Then, from that gem duo, I'm going to go up, two color A, size 15s, go immediately down the next size 15s, the color A's, and finally through that pearl. Then I'm going to add another set of random beads. I'm going to add six seed beads, three millimeter, about a two inch length of beads, size 15, my drop piece, and three size 15s. And then I'm going to turn this into a fringe drop. I'm going to skip over the first three seed beads and then pass back all the way up through this channel of beads. We are then going to anchor our fringe by passing through the size 15 that is next to the pearl bead there. Now we're going to travel all the way down until we're at the size 15 in between the pearl and the gem duo. So you just travel through the gem duo, pearl, gem duo, pearl, gem duo, pearl, end up at the size 15 between here. Right there, that is the seed bead we want to come out of. You'll see it in comparison to the loop fringe that we've added before. And then, you'll just do the same thing for this fringe drop over here, adding on a certain amount of beads. If you want to make it longer or shorter, that's up to you. Add on all your beads. You'll skip forward three beads and go up through the entire channel, and then you're going to anchor it at the pearl. So when you move up, you'll just pass immediately through the pearl next over. If you choose to, you can go back and forth using these crosses to go and reinforce the pendant. But after that, you can finish your threads, and you will be complete. And after a massive Herculean labor, your rope will be complete. Make it spoopy, make it pretty, make it both spritty and spoopy, spritty. Make it something else altogether. Whatever you do, just make it your own. Come and join us on the Facebook group at Creations from Lessons with Odin and show off your pictures because I really would love to see your color coordinations and what kind of focal pieces you've used on this. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I think I went over some additional variations on this rope piece and I hope you enjoyed. I might be working more with the herringbone because it's my favorite stitch. But yes, that will do it from me. Don't forget to check out the Patreon tutorial of the Gothic Choker Necklace with Zolly Duo Beads. This is really fun, and this can be very, very nifty to do for Halloween with the Blood Drippies. Or don't even add those if that's not your shtick. All pertinent links are down below. Check out my Patreon. Check out all of my other shenanigans right here. Be sure to like up and subscribe if you want to see more bullshit from me. Check out my other shenanigans on the YouTube. I do a lot of things. I never sleep. Please enjoy them. Check out my sci-fi as well. I have links to my blog down below and probably a card over here. So, thank you all so much for joining me. And of course, if there's anything spooky I need to try out right now, feel free to let me know down below. I will see you next time.